In this video, I want to take a look at Newton's third law. So I've already written out here a very common description of Newton's third law. It's one of the, uh, the most common for every action there's a reaction, or for every force there's another force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And so this um, video will take a little bit of audience participation. I I'm going to ask a question and I want you to find the Newton's third law force pair. So let me sort of get that out there. Newton's so third law, Newton's third law, force, pair. So for every force, there's another force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, and, and we'd like to find out what that is. So let's consider a book on a table. One of the forces on this book is the uh, force due to gravity that's uh, attracting the bush book to the earth. And so the question is, what is the Newton's third law force pair to the force of gravity on the book? So it shouldn't take too long. But just take a minute and, and come to a conclusion. If you have a piece of paper, write it down. Make a commitment to what is the Newton's third law force pair to the uh, force of gravity on the book. The book is simply at rest on the table. All right. So um, if you answered the normal force of the table on the book, then you are like, 99% of uh, all of my students, you are completely wrong and have a very serious misunderstanding of Newton's third law that if you do not address that now, um, you could fail this part of the course. So is that is that dramatic enough? All right. Um, while the normal force of the table on the book is in fact equal to the force due to gravity. It is also in the opposite direction of the force due to gravity. That is the reason why the book is at rest. There is no net force on the book. But that has nothing to do with Newton's third law. All right. So that's one problem with Newton's third law is, is how it's worded. Well, the, the definition I wrote there is absolutely true. Um, it's so misleading about what is going on with Newton's third law that knowing it can actually inhibit someone's understanding of physics. So let's talk a little bit about Newton's third law force pairs. And our, the first thing we, we have to do is uh, find a fail-safe mechanism to identify what they are. So let's uh, pull up some, let's identify some, some hints. First, uh, Newton's third law force pairs, third law force pairs, um, they always act on different objects. Never the same object. You can never have a Newton, Newton's third law force pair forces on the same free body diagram. So you can never have them act on the same object. And so how are we able, how can we identify them? And this is where we have to go back when we first learned about forces, which is a Newton's third law force pair is all about the agent and the object. Remember when we first looked at forces, we said that every force has an agent and an object, and the force is uh, from the agent on the object. The Newton's third law force pair to every force simply reverses the agent and the object. And let me show you just a, a really easy way. Um, let's go back to the very first video on forces, and I said every force can be written in the following form. The blank force by the blank on the blank, where this is the type of force, gravitational, contact, 
uh, tension, whatever, by the uh, agent on the object. And so in this case, uh, for my original question, I would have said it's the gravitational force by the Earth, the Earth is the agent in this case, on the book. The book is the object. So I've now, doing that, so we put this in gravity, gravitational force by the Earth on the book. That is the, the force that I identified in, in that example. Okay. So what is the Newton's third law force pair? It can be found simply by reversing the objects of the preposition in this, in this sentence. That's all you need to do. Set up a force in this, a sentence of this form and then switch the uh, objects of these prepositions, switch the agent and object. The Newton's third law force pair for the gravitational force by the Earth on the book is the gravitational force by the book on the Earth. That's it. Book on the Earth. Keep gravitational. It has to be the same type of force. The gravitational force by the book on the Earth is the Newton's third law force pair. Okay, so let's let's look at a couple more examples. So now, I uh, remove the table, and now my book is falling. It has some acceleration down because it has a force due to gravity acting on it by the Earth. Okay, so there is also, if I turn this around, this is an, an object, it is, uh, there is a, if I, the free body diagram of the Earth, a force due to gravity uh, on the Earth by the book, and it is uh, directed up. And so the question is, as this thing, as this object falls, which force is greater? the gravitational force that the book exerts on the Earth, or the gravitational force that the Earth exerts on the book. And again, like I would say, historically, most students want to say that the force on the book is greater. But we just looked at that. We just identified that these are Newton's law, third, Newton's third law force pairs the gravitational force by the Earth on the book and the gravitational force by the book on the Earth are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And that is absolutely true. As the book falls, it exerts a force on the Earth exactly as strong as a gravitational force the Earth exerts on the book. And the reason why that sometimes throws students off is because the book moves and the Earth doesn't. But that has nothing to do with the force. If we look at the the uh, gravitational force on the book, it's going to lead to an acceleration given by the mass of the book times this acceleration of the book. Now, if the um, uh, book is um, one kilogram and the acceleration near the surface of the Earth is about 10 kilograms, 10, sorry, 10 meters per second squared, then that gives us a, a force of the uh, Earth on the book equal to about 10 newtons, and so that gives us sort of a 1 kilogram times 10 meters per second squared. So the, the force of the, uh, the book on the Earth is exactly the same size, 10 newtons. So it's going to lead to an acceleration equal to the mass of the Earth times the acceleration of the Earth. Now the mass of the Earth is about 10 to the 25 kilograms. So the acceleration is about 10 over 10 to the 25, or about 10 to the negative 24 uh, meters per second squared. 
and that means it will move a distance in about the one second it took the uh, book to fall of about 10 to the minus 25 meters. Well, an atom, an atom is about 10 to the minus 10 meters. So the distance the Earth moves is 15 orders of magnitude smaller than the size of the atom. And so really talking about movement at all at that scale is meaningless. And so the reason why we don't see any action on part of the Earth is because its mass is so large, even though the forces they exert on each other are the same. Let's look at this one again. The same, it's essentially the same question. I have a car, a truck, big car, moving at enormous velocity, and it hits a marshmallow. And so the question is, which is stronger, the force, the contact force that the truck exerts on the marshmallow, truck on marshmallow, or the contact force that the marshmallow exerts on the truck. Now look, the marshmallow got smushed, and the truck hardly knew it was there. So how can we compare the forces? And the answer is, the forces are exactly the same. These are Newton's third law force pairs. They fit exactly this description. They're the same type of force. You switch the object and the agent. The, force, the truck exerts a contact force on the marshmallow. The marshmallow exerts a contact force on the truck, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. So the magnitudes, the size of the forces, again, they're opposite in direction, so that's, that's not the same. But the magnitudes are exactly the same. The fact that the consequences are much different have to do with the structure of the objects and the mass of the objects and other things. But Newton's third law ensures that the forces that they exert on each other are the same. And so the only way to get used to this is, is lots of practice and we'll have other examples. But the, the key point is this is confusing, is to, to stay with this sort, of, this sort of construction. Newton's third law force pairs always act on different objects, and they're related to the fact that one of the forces is the agent exerting that force on the object, and the Newton's third law force pair is that object becoming the agent and exerting the same type of force back in the opposite direction. So as long as you keep that in mind, you'll be able to identify your Newton's third law force pairs.